welcome Wolf of Wolfettes to the Jurassic World Aftermath collection on the PlayStation VR 2. And I hope you guys and girls are having an absolutely fantastic day. Now the game we're going to be playing today is basically like a somewhat survival horror Jurassic Park game. A little bit like Dino Crisis in VR where you have to make your way through Isha Nublar, if I remember correctly. I might be getting that name completely wrong and you need to escape from it whilst having things like Velociraptors, Triceratops, T-Rexes pursuing you, etc. So it's basically a survival horror game. The Velociraptor is very, very good at jump scaring me, so this should be a very, very entertaining playthrough for you guys and girls. But before we jump into the game, I just need to quickly adjust the settings because at the moment I turn around like this which is very, very PlayStation VR 1, and I don't like it. So I'm just going to sort this out quickly, and then we will jump into the game. So to do that, first things first, you want to put seated mode on, otherwise the menus are going to be very high in the sky. So we're going to turn on seated mode. There you go. Now I'm standing up technically. <laughs> and then we're going to go on to comfort settings. And I think we want to have it... Um, where's the turning option? Uh, I think it's... smooth if I remember correctly and we're going to have the turn rate on slow mostly because if I pull it on fast I just feel very very sick so basically we got smooth and then slow and then you can turn around like this see it's much better like this it takes a bit of getting used to and you probably will feel sick regardless of the option you choose mind you if you do feel sick I recommend you leave snap turned on because you probably will feel less sick but if you want to play it a bit more realistically uh, then you want to have smooth turned on but you might feel a bit more sick but I'm sure you'll get used to it relatively quickly when I first turned it on smooth I felt very sick but in about 10 minutes I felt fine so you should be okay hopefully all right uh, that's all done hand movement hand left dominant hand is the right so this is what you're going to grab things and pick things up with okay yep uh we're going to turn this off on everything. We don't want this on at all. Every time you like crouch down or move or run, you get this like black thing around the screen. I think it's supposed to reduce motion sickness, but we don't want any of that turned on. Uh, movement, I think this is already done. Yep. Okay, lovely. All right, everything is done. Okay, so you move around in this game with the uh, analog sticks, just like in Horizon Call of the Mountain. Uh, this is a PC VR game, and I think it's a relatively older game now, so... There's not too much to interact with in this game. It is a bit more, um, a bit more PSVR, PSVR one esque, you know. And I think they released this game on Nintendo without any of the VR stuff. But you move around like this. You're pressing the analog stick to crouch, which you're going to be doing a lot. And then you interact with things by pressing in the uh, R1 button, like that. I don't know if you guys and girls can see it. I'm probably not not even looking the right way. <laughs> but yeah, everything should be done now. If you want to skip forward in the video, feel free to do so. But I like leaving the options in the video because a lot of people that deal with motion sickness might want to see, you know, what's the best options for them and what's a bad idea and stuff like that. So I like to leave this stuff in. Lovely jubbly. Here we go. Looks like we're in the sky at the moment. Yep, we're on a plane. Hello? Hey Sam, it's Mia. Oh Great crap. Morning. I just wanted to check in. I didn't put the subtitles on. There you go. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. I think she said, hey Sam, it's Mia. That's all she said so far, don't worry. Use L1 button or R1 button to grab gear. 
Yeah, I would prefer if it was the trigger button because that's a bit more easier to remember, but you get used to it very, very quickly. But remember, on this controller, it's your middle finger to press L1 and R1. Big shit. Oh man, I could just tickle its feet. Don't worry. I've got this. Ready? Alright, that didn't work. Right, we do need the parachutes. I'm doing it, Mia. He doesn't want to. Oh, fucking hell, I only just saw you. <laughs> Alright, that's it. That was a short game, wasn't it? We're dead. <laughs> oh, man. Jurassic World Aftermath Collection. Yeah. Hey, hey. I'm stuck. I hear footsteps. Uh-oh. Hey, Juan, don't move. Oh, don't move, Juan. Juan. Oh. Oh, that's a bit... Oh, as a big boy. Juan, shut up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Juan. Juan, shut up. <laughs> Juan, what are you doing? I was expecting to see a dead body or something then. Right, do not move. Do not move. Oh my god. I can't look up because my light boxes are there. Oh god, that's creepy. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Oh, you gotta love that classic T Rex roar, ain't ya? Such a classic, ain't it? The sound of fear from everybody's childhood. <laughs> Man, Jurassic Park 1 did used to creep me out when I was a kid. Welcome to Jurassic World. Man, the trophies are good in this game as well. They've all got like little names that are like references to the films. It's great. <laughs> Do you think he saw us and stuff like that? <laughs> it's very good. Oh, there we go. We can leave already. 
Alright, uh, just a word of warning once again. Every time I do PSVR playthroughs on YouTube, I've got my two light boxes above me and uh, they are technically too bright for the room and it messes with the sensors. So sometimes you might see something jitter a teeny bit or I might get the message pop up telling me that, you know, the room's too bright. So if that does happen in this playthrough, I do apologise. It didn't happen too much in Horizon Call of the Mountain and I think it only happened two times in the Kayak VR Mirage. So, uh, we should be alright, but just a word of warning. Okay, right, let's start making our way around. Now, I think the first, like, 30 minutes or so of this game, like, once you've done this introduction, which was obviously very cool, seeing the pterodactyls and the T-Rex and stuff like that, and, uh, but I think after that bit, this section right here, I think it's relatively... It's a bit meh for about 30 minutes, but once you start meeting the Velociraptors, probably in about 30 or so minutes, that's when the game really picks up. <laughs> really picks up. And that's when I'm going to be shitting myself. Oh, look. A Diplodocus, ain't it? I think they're called. Why has everything got to be up in the sky at the moment? Right where my light boxes are. <laughs> Just want me to look directly at the light box, don't you? You want to ruin my video, don't you, Diplodocus? I think I can hear the Jurassic Park theme tune in the background, so I better keep talking for now. Just to oh look, oh look at that little cutie! It come here, but ah, I better keep talking, try and block out the music, and then hopefully I don't get a copyright claim. Who made the soundtrack for Jurassic Park? It was John Williams, wasn't it? Oh, I guess we're gonna go in there. That's a good way of like doing a tutorial, ain't it? Have you followed the little cute dinosaurs? Actually, let me have a look. Make sure I am going the right way. So we've got residents over there. Looks like the power rain on though. Yeah, no power at the moment. Uh, if there's a red bar above it, that means it's locked and you can't go in. See? See, like the red lights, that means you can't go in there. And then you've got different, like, mini games and stuff you can do as you progress through the game. You get new gadgets and stuff. Then you can start interacting with these panels. And then you'll be able to go through those doors and stuff like that. But if there's, if there's loads of doors locked and you're not sure where to go, nine times out of ten, there'll be a vent on the floor you can crawl through. So, uh... Just look for one of these and you'll, then you'll find out where to go. Sometimes it might not be a vent. It might be that you need to crawl underneath a table to get past some rubble. Things like that. So if you ever think you're lost in this game, just look for somewhere to crawl. And then you'll reach the area you need to get to. And soon you're going to have a compass on your hand that will tell you where to go as well. But that's a little bit fiddly, that is. Uh oh. Why did that fall over? It's probably that little dinosaur, ain't it? But yeah, just be aware that if you get spotted by any of the dinosaurs, well, especially the Velociraptors, and the screen goes red, uh, th there's no way of escaping in my experience. You can run, you can go into different like little hidey places, but he's always going to catch you. So, just a word of warning. I'm a little bit on edge at the moment because I, I heard that paint can full over. Oh no. I don't remember anything happening in, the, in this bit. It's been, a, it's been a, a, a little while since I've done the intro to this game. <laughs> So uh, I could be wrong, but I don't remember anything happening in the first, like, first few minutes of the game, other than the introduction, of course. I've also, one thing I will say, uh, if, if you do play this, obviously I can't wear a headset because I need to be aware of what's going on in my house. I need to be able to hear what's going on, so I can't wear a headset. And I also have to have my TV low so that you don't get enough echo in my uh, recordings. So uh, I do recommend, I strongly recommend you wear a, a headset when you play this game. Because you can really hear where the Velociraptor is or other dinosaurs. You can hear if they're like in a room nearby. There's like little bits of music that play sometimes when they walk into the room that you're in. Things like that. So you can sort of really know where the Velociraptor is. You can also hear it's like footsteps as well. So I do recommend you wear a headset. Or have your TV on lad. <laughs> and then you'll sort of know where the Velociraptor is. As I'm not going to know, I reckon I'm going to have a hard time with this game. And I'm, I'm a big old pussy with horror. And this is a horror game. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just going to be rough, I reckon. OK. 
Okay. Looks like we're heading into operations. And we didn't need to have our uh, gadget either. Taking control. Okay, the breaker room. You know, I think it's a little bit, I think it's a bit of a invasion of privacy, you being able to see everything I do. Because even before we crash landed, you asked me to equip that camera on myself, Mia, and you being able to see everywhere that I go. Oh no, man, it's a bit of an invasion in, uh, in privacy. What if, what if I lay down on my bed, you know, and I've left the body cam on for some reason, and I'm getting it on with a lovely lady, or I'm having a wank or something, you know, who knows? Who knows what Sam's gonna be doing? I don't know. And then the body cam, you're gonna be looking straight at my schlong. <laughs> Or what if I use a toilet, which is probably much of a much more normal situation. What if I'm using the toilet? You're going to be watching me, Mia. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't like this. It's a very big invasion of privacy. That's the thing what I wouldn't like about if I was working in the police force, because obviously they wear body cams for evidence and stuff. So uh, I, w I wouldn't like that, just having my body cam on, listening to everything I say and do. <laughs> I'd feel a bit awkward. This ain't the breaker room, is it? Oh no, the breaker room's over here. This is where you power up each individual area of uh, Isha Nubla, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there is. It's one nine six seven. It's Ronnie's birthday. One nine six seven. Make sure you push with a little bit of force, just so the game knows you're pushing the buttons. Yeah, I think we might come back to this location several times in the game to power up different districts of Isha Nubla. That sounds promising. Back to the console. It is a shame that there isn't many things to interact with in this game. Other than things that you actually need to use, you can't interact with anything. It's not like Horizon Call of the Mountain where you can just like pick up a random cup or something and things like that, or instruments and stuff like that. You literally can only interact with stuff that is relevant to the game. So that's a bit of a shame. But like I said, this is, I think this is a relatively old game for PC VR and they've ported it to PSVR too. They've given it some haptic feedback and stuff like that, you know, and it responds beautifully and it's very smooth, but... In terms of like stuff you do with modern VR, you don't really do it in this game. The NMS center is split into sections. Zone A is residents and corporate. Ignore it. Zone D and E are the labs. That's my life's work. But it's not the priority anymore, so forget it. We'll forget that for now. That leaves B and C. Transport. There's a radio tower above the ranger station. If we want to call for help, that's our best bet. Head back to the breaker and activate transport. Okay. So we're heading to the transportation zone. Okay. I think we're safe in this room. I think this is basically like the um basically like the typewriting rooms in Resident Evil. You know, you're always safe in there. That's what this area is sort of like, as far as I know. There we go, we're gonna power on transport. Well, as long as you don't release any T-Rexes. Last thing, the center's massive, so you'll want a nav assist. Check the storeroom. Okay. I'm guessing that's a storeroom because the shutter's now gone up. <laughs> Oh, also, I think there's a collectible in this game called plushies. I've not found any off camera, but it uh, might be something you want to look for. Yes, that's it. Attach it to your wrist. Check the arrow on the back of your hand. 
It'll point wherever you need to be. Okay, when you're ready, head to the atrium and follow the signs. Transport, then ranger station. Okay, so yeah, if you look at your hand, you can see your next objective or how many things you need to do for that required objective. Like the game told me to, you know, collect, I don't know, 10 packets of cigarettes or some random thing like that. Then it will show, it will just say 10 packs of cigarettes. But it might not necessarily give you an arrow. The arrow normally tells you where to go. But when there's an objective in an area, it doesn't always necessarily tell you, tell you where to go. But instead, you'll get like a vibration in your hand if you need to like collect something or activate a bunch of things. So uh, just be aware of that. You don't always have the arrow telling you exactly where to go. It will lead you to the area, but when you're in the area, that's when you might have to, uh, you know, rely on the vibrations in your hands. It's pretty good, actually. As you get closer to it, your hand starts vibrating more. It's pretty nice. <laughs> Okay. I can already see it from here. Apologies if the uh, world keeps like turning a little bit. I think my uh, light boxes are really messing with this game. Look, it blocked up the vent with a bunch of rubble. How the hell did when, when did that happen? <laughs> we literally just went through there. There's definitely been someone in the area. Probably a bloody T-Rex walking around. Hopefully they don't have those dinosaurs. You know the ones that spit. In Jurassic Part 1. The one that kills uh, Dobson, I think his name is. Is it Dobson? Whatever his name is. The chunky guy that, that is trying to steal stuff from Jurassic Park. Oh, they don't have those spitty guys. Because then they can spit tar directly in my face. Yeah. Finally kicked in. So this used to be the welcome concourse. Keep going. You'll find a way through. Alright, well, we've got to be careful of the uh, pterodactyls. You saw what they did a minute ago. Ah, oh, yes. Here you go. It's basically what we're going to be doing like we did in Outlast. Sometimes you've got to quickly get into the locker. The thing is, this bloody raptor and other creatures in the game, they move so quickly. So I, every time I see these lockers, I always feel like opening them, just so they're open. Because then I can quickly just quickly dive in. You know, and there you go. We're sorted. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, there's so many lockers, you don't really want to spend all day doing that. But I'm always tempted to do it, because I, I, I do get very scared in this game. I'm, I ain't got no fear of dinosaurs, but I have a fear of being jump scared. It aggravates me. Oops. Thankfully, things are not too creepy at the moment, because I've got a bunch of kids outside my house laughing and giggling, so it's just making it funny. <laughs> Okay, so we did have to come in here first. All right. I'm not liking the size of these cobwebs either, because if there's tarantulas in this game, that's going to be way worse than a velociraptor. Did you hear that? I don't know if that was like a, just a dinosaur in the background or if I'm hearing things. Well, normally when you say that, we need to find a vent. Oh no, we can go through that door. There you go. Oh man. I'm getting some mega Dino Crisis vibes. Like, Dino Crisis used to scare the crap out of me, and it never made really much sense to me, because I've never been scared of dinosaurs. I've always thought dinosaurs are cool. In fact, I've always thought it would be great if dinosaurs were actually walking about, you know, in the real world. I thought that would be cool. Even things like T-Rexes and Raptors. But whenever I play these games, I think it's just the fear of being jump-scared. I don't like being jump-scared. Like, it actually makes me angry. It's not so much it scares me, it makes me angry. It's like, because I know I've been bamboozled, it makes me mad. And that anger feeling... I don't know, I don't like it. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. It's a weird feeling. It's a sensation that I don't like. So that's why I hate being jump scared and I always avoid horror games. And I'm seeing these flipping raptor claw marks everywhere at the moment. <laughs> everywhere. You see what I mean though? There's always an event you can crawl through. 
And let me know if you know what this is from. Now I know what it feels like. Now I know what a TV dinner feels like. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you know what that's from. I'm just making jokes because I'm feeling very tense at the moment. <laughs> don't worry, I don't scream like the fake YouTubers. You ain't got to worry about stuff like that. I'll probably just go, oh! <laughs> that's what I always bloody do. Or drop my controller. Oh, nice. Oh, what's that? Where's that lead? I don't like the fact that there's a locked door here. Hello? There's probably a dead body in there. Someone's probably just locked themselves in there. Flipping doors. Oh, man, I don't like it when the doors open. Because, the, because these are all motion doors. Motion activated doors. That's why the raptor can follow you all the time. So every time a door opens, I feel like the raptor might be near me. What is that? Oh, that's just a statue, ain't it? Oh, when you see these things, uh, I'll, I'll interact with it right now, but you can interact with these when there's like dinosaurs around or stuff like that. You want to distract them so that you can go through a door. So if the velociraptor is basically holding you hostage and you need to get out of the room, you just press this. See? And it makes a ton of noise. But it doesn't make noise constantly, so, you know, make sure you get get moving. <laughs> Bloody get moving. And you're going to have a gadget that will allow you to do some of these things from, like, a distance and that. Look at that. That looked like it was real back there. Yeah, definitely a statue. But that's what I was talking about. They're the ones that spit. Yeah, I hope we don't see any of those bad boys. But I'll be keeping these videos at about 30 minutes and uh, I'm going to be uploading this game probably how I did the last bunch of VR games. Every time I've recorded a bunch, they all get uploaded immediately. So probably like two, three episodes per day plus Hogwarts Legacy. Hey, what's going on over here, you little devils? Leave them alone, you bullies. Hey, go on, shoot, clear off. What did they do to you, little guy? Was that a baby velociraptor? Where'd he go? Was that a baby Velociraptor? Well, if that was a baby Velociraptor, I hope they remember what I did. And I hope they tell their mum and dad as well. If they've got a mum and dad. Well, they probably don't have a mum and dad. This uh, entire place has all been done through... Uh... They always brought in yellowfin tuna from the dock. It drove the birds crazy along the coast when they smelled it coming. When we evacuated... Right after the last boat, the Indominus tore through the track. Oh, God. Even if you got it running, it's a death trap. The Indominus is the T-Rex, ain't it? The Indominus Rex. I've only seen Jurassic World 1, 2, and 3 once. <laughs> just, literally just... What, can I do one with my hand? There we go. Once. I've just seen it once. <laughs> oh, lovely. I hope I'm not missing anything in like terms of like collectibles or whatever. I'm not feeling too scared at the moment because I'm pretty sure I remember the first bit of the game being relatively mild. You didn't have to worry about anything really. A couple of like bangs and stuff like that, but nothing scary. But the next episode, Wolf and Wolfettes, I will be bricking it big time. Especially part three, I reckon. Part two and three, especially three, I reckon I'm going to be shitting myself, mate. I keep smacking my bed. <laughs> If you're wondering why I'm letting go, it's because my hand keeps whacking my bed. Okay. Supply room over there. I like the sound of that. Might be able to find a rocket launcher. Just letting you know right now, there isn't any weapons in this game. It's basically like Outlast. <laughs> no weapons. Or, uh, oh no, Resident Evil 7 gives you weapons, doesn't it? Yeah, you get weapons in Resident Evil 7, just not many. Okay. I don't think we can go through there yet. I think we need a gadget for this. Yeah, I think we need a gadget for that, so we can't go through there yet. Oh, God, bloody hell, man, that made me feel sick. What was that all about, game? What'd you do that for? Flipping world span.
This is what I'm talking about though, when you have to crawl through areas like this to get past rubble. Oh. Oh, my wrist is already buzzing. It's already been 30 minutes. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Alright, well, I better end it now so I can get this video on, on YouTube today. I'm recording this on uh, March, and it is currently March 13th, maybe? It's the Monday. Whatever's, whatever Monday is closest to March 13th, I guess. <laughs> it might be the 13th, I'm not sure. So hopefully you should be watching it today, uh, as long as it gets uh, rendered in time and I upload it before I go to work. And you should see this today, hopefully. So yeah, thanks for watching, Wolf Wolfettes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, share, and join the pack today.